Hi guys, it's Mrs. Wood. Um, I really miss you guys a lot. I hope everyone is doing well. One of the things that I really miss most about um, being at school with you is being able to read stories to you. Um, and so I decided that over the next couple of days, our reading activities are going to focus on one of my favorite books, The Summer My Father Was Ten. Um, I'm going to today read the first part of the story to you. And then there's a Google slideshow that you're going to fill in um, the first th the first three slides for, um, and they really are going to focus on figurative language um, and characters because we're going to be looking for some clues to theme. And so some of the things that I want you to pay paying attention to about the characters are, um, you know, the way that they act in the story, their reasons for behaving the way that they do, how they interact with each other. Um, I want you to pay attention and listen for figurative language examples, and I want you to pay attention to who is telling the story. And I don't mean me, I mean who within the story is telling it. Um, and so we're going to get started. The summer my father was 10. Every year, my father and I plant a garden. Tomatoes, peppers, onions, marigolds, and zinnias grow in neat, straight rows. We pull the weeds that pop up and we water, mulch, and tend it all through the summer, cutting the flowers to make bouquets for the kitchen table or to give to Mrs. Morowski, our neighbor who broke her hip last winter and has to walk with a cane. And every spring, my father tells me about the Mr. Bella Vista and the summer my father was 10. Mr. Bella Vista lived alone in a third floor apartment above my father and my grandmother. Plants grew all winter on his windowsill, and in the spring he trudged with rake, garden fork, and trowel to the vacant lot next door to plant a garden. Some years he had to drag away old tires, broken bottles, and other trash before he could even start. Once his garden was planted, though, you could find him there early every morning weeding, watering, and watching over his plants. And in the evening, he would go and sit on an old wooden folding chair and listen to opera on his radio. My father didn't know much about the old man, always, only that he always wore flannel shirts buttoned up to his neck winter or summer. He didn't talk much to other people who lived in the building, and when he did talk, his accent made his words sound strange. My father and his friends made fun of him sometimes, and called him Old Spaghetti Man. Then one August afternoon when my father was 10, he and his friends were playing baseball near Mr. Bella Vista's garden. My father's friend Nicky hit a ball over my father's head and it landed in the middle of the garden. My father ran to get it and found it under a big leafy tomato plant. The tomatoes were round and red and ripe, just about the size of a baseball. And my father thought, boy, I'd like to see Nicky's face if I threw a tomato instead of the ball. And he hit it and it splattered all over him. And so that's just what he did. And Nicky did hit it and got splattered, just like my father thought he would. My father laughed and laughed and Nicky chased him back into the garden and grabbed a tomato off the vine and threw it at my father. Then my father threw one at Nicky and then Joe threw one at Kevin. Before long, they were all throwing tomatoes and peppers at each other or batting them against the side of the building, the hollow peppers thumping against the bricks and showering thin white seeds and pulp on the wall and ground, the tomatoes hitting with a splat and bursting into messy globs. They even pulled up onions and uprooted the flowers, swinging them around and around over their heads before letting them fly. They were shouting and laughing so much that they never heard Mr. Bella Vista coming. But when Nicky stopped laughing and suddenly stood still, eyes wide and staring, my father turned and saw his neighbor. He was shaking his head and saying something in Italian. He looked at the walls splattered with tomatoes and peppers and at my father and his friends. And he said just one word. Why? My father looked at the garden, trampled and ruined, and it was only then he realized what they had done. He looked back at Mr. Bella Vista, but the old man had gone to his plants and was tenderly picking up the broken pieces 
and setting them in a pile at his feet. My father's friends all went away, leaving my father and Mr. Bella Vista alone in the lot. My father wanted to go over and tell his neighbor he was sorry, but his feet were like heavy stones holding him there. He watched for a few more minutes and then dragged himself home. Okay, I'm going to stop here for today. And just like I said in the beginning, um, you're now going to open the Google slideshow that I attached to this assignment and you're going to fill in the slides for day one. There are three slides with some questions on it that focus on figurative language, um, point of view, who's telling the story, and the characters and how they're acting and what you think their motivations are. Motivations mean the reasons why they do things. And then we're going to pick up where we left off with the story tomorrow and we'll, we'll finish it up then. All right, it was nice reading with you guys and we'll be in touch again tomorrow.